Next in our presentation outline is um, from the COE streams, Mr. Muiwa Ogunboye. It be represented this morning by Mr. Martins. Let's get comes. We are taking notes because after all of this presentation, we're going to have a uh, session with all of the panelists and they open, we ask questions and just discuss so that at the end of the day, PFO will give us the communique. So it's not just about talking, but it's about chatting way forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Martin Zakimba. I'm representing Muyewa Ogungoye. Um, who is the MD of um, Eastream Networks. He's unavoidably absent. So I'll be sharing with you some of the thoughts that we have to get. We had to, um, as um, the exec team of um, Eastream. Uh, let me stand on the um, existing protocols. And I hope I won't be the last pe person standing on that. Um, Eastream is an ISP. Uh, we've been around for about 16 years now and we provide um, connectivity services within Nigeria and um, outside Nigeria within the West African sub-region. Um, uh, I would like to thank um, P PFO uh, for giving us this platform to share our thoughts and perspectives. Um, the topic I will be speaking to briefly is um, driving inclusive growth in the telecom sector with special focus on small and indigenous operators. Um, so when we talk of um, indigenous operators, I mean businesses that are 100% owned by Nigerians. Um, there is no foreign equity in the ownership structure of um, an indigenous firm. And um, inclusive growth to me personally means um, allowing players in this sector to grow together, both foreign and local players. Um, allowing us to build businesses that are sustainable from um, a revenue point of view and also ensuring that we are profitable down the line to ensure that we survive um, in this um, sector. Without mincing words, the, 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 the growth of um, technology is contingent upon uh, the praise of local content. And um, we've seen presentations from Chidi and also from Dr. Coca, and they keep saying something about the need to develop local content. Same thing in the telecom space, especially in the sectors, in the, in the subsector where we operate. It's pertinent that we allow local ISPs and service providers to thrive alongside uh, our foreign counterparts. Uh, for, the, for this presentation, I will focus on just three key areas that drive growth sustainably and will ensure that um, ISPs survive in this sector. I will focus on skill development, I will focus on access to key resources, uh, capital and licenses. Um, already, we've, we've, we've spoken about access to ca uh, capital to build our networks. I will also talk about um, innovation and R&D. Now, the, over the last 20 years, um, the, the impact that telecoms has made on the, on the, on the, on the country, you know, in this nation, cannot be overemphasized. Uh, the impact on our political system, on our financial system, even the way we interact socially, has dramatically improved, all because of the growth that we've seen in this sector. As of June 2022, NCC said they've licensed 756 ISPs with only a quarter of that active. The rest are gone. They fizzled out. The, the competition in that space has, 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 has them practically choked 75% and they've all gone out. But the remaining 25% have been able to survive, catch, carve a niche for themselves and keep their heads above water. So, critical to the survival of the local ISPs is skills development. Um, if you, about seven, eight years ago, you could find ISPs that hired, you have maybe one or two CCIs in your core network group, but today, you hardly find a single, you, you, you hardly find ISPs that have CCIs. Why? We've had a brain drain, everybody's gone. 
like she was joking about it. They are all in Canada. They've all gone. I know of banks today that the entire IT system, the entire IT department are all gone. So this brain drain has really, really affected the way ISPs uh, run their businesses over the last couple of years. Now, how do we grow local content? How do we build skills if even our schools are not open? So education is critical. So we can't, we can't discuss um, building local content outside our schools. You know, we, we, we know what it is today. They've been down for six months. How do we survive like that? It's just practically impossible. We need people to build this. And if you compare what we do in the ISPs with what you see in um, foreign telecoms, they have the resources to bring these skills into the country. And the quality of service you deliver is proportional to the skill set that you have in building these services. So critical to the survival of the lo of a local ISPs in this telecom space is access to skills. And you need money to access these skills. It's a big issue that we deal with today. Now, in the ISP space, we practically run, you know, you run your businesses with applications to do that, that, that were developed for foreign companies. And in, 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 a, in a bid to survive, we've had to go back and build our business applications locally. So you find us today running CRMs, ERPs, banking, I mean, um, uh, billing applications that were developed locally. So if you, if, you, if you take a look at some of the ISPs, a lot of the applications we're running today were built locally, all in a bid to survive. And I dare say that if you, go to, if you look at some of them, some of the ISPs that, um, that have foreign backers, they have the resources and the ability to run applications that have been tested and tried over multiple subsidiaries. So critical to the survival of the ISPs in this space is our ability to find locally built applications that we can use. Let me talk to the access to key resources. I will, in, in, in talking about this, I will focus on just two. Uh, access to licenses, that spectrum that we need, and then access to capital, that we know what the issues are. Today, and I'm happy NCC is there, the cost of acquiring spectrum that you need to deliver services are just too exorbitant. That is why, if you look at it, you will see that only those who have foreign access to cash are able to acquire the licenses they need to operate. A lot of the ISPs today that are still surviving are running their businesses on ISM Bank. Only a few are able to acquire spectrum that they need, licensed spectrum, to deliver services at the last mile. So, if we are going to encourage local participation in this sector, there must be a critical think, thinking on how we license ISPs. Let me give you a good example. The MNOs today are the only ones licensed to provide GSM services nationally. Is there anything wrong if we look at They've been here for a couple of years. Is there anything wrong in allowing smaller players deliver voice services, even at the regional level, for local players? I don't think that is something we cannot do. It is possible. And I think we need to look at it. Even if you, you, you need to allow local players provide, I mean, to access VNO licenses on the voice network, I think it's something we need to look at. Access to Forex is something that is killing local ISPs. If you look at those that are not local, those that have access to foreign, um, uh, foreign um, uh, 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 cash, a lot of them, what they do today is that they have access to infrastructure that are owned by their parent firms outside Nigeria. And then they compete with us locally. Not gainsaying it, 
a lot of those that provide submarine cables today are consortium members, and yet they are playing in the downstream space. So they, are, they, they have access to uh, submarine cable, and they have local partners, even, I mean, they, they have operations locally that they then compete with local players like us who are not able to be consortium members. So we buy from them, and then we sell retail with them. How do we want our local ISPs to survive? That is a major problem. Practically all the devices we use are all imported. Our routers, our switches, our radios, 100% are all imported. And you buy everything with dollar. Today, like you know, is 710. How do we continue to survive in the industry? How do we keep our networks up and running? Only ISPs that have access to Forex that can talk to their subsidiaries outside Nigeria who can buy for them there and ship here and then they will do cross-posting in their books. We know how these things work. So what I mean what, what what chances do the local companies have? Let me round up by saying that if the policy owners want the local players to thrive, they must find a middle ground wherein foreign telecom operators that have practically unlimited access to capital and other factors of production do not walk away with practically all the benefits at the same time, stifling indigenous operators. This can be done through carefully designed policies. In conclusion, inclusive growth in this sector remains elusive as inequality persists in the areas I have briefly mentioned. I submit, therefore, that the policymakers must desire strongly that local entrepreneurs who are already disadvantaged from the starting block are motivated and incentivized to develop local and indigenous content. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin Zakingba.